himself with the pledge. With his to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, uh, did you have a chance to take a look at the meetings from or the minutes from the September 26th meeting? And if so, uh, we have any corrections or additions? If not, we entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I will second. Move, move by Fitzwater, seconded by Wilson. Those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you very much. The Board of Public Works and Safety meeting uh, minutes for the 7th. 21st or in your packet for information purposes. Okay, let's move right along to communications. Boo Fest event, uh, Board of Works uh, approved October the 27th, uh, 4.30 to 6 p.m. from downtown Boo Fest. So, you know, you're gonna be standing around the corner handing out candy, uh, that's when it's gonna be. I tell you, several years ago, I'm going to rabbit trail here, Bob. Several years ago, we're talking five, six years ago, I was down there standing in my leather, leather Eisenhower jacket and shirt. Doctors, kid comes up to me, junior high age, and he goes, I know who you're dressed up like. <laughs> you remember this? And I'm like, who am I dressed up like? He says, Dick Cheney. <laughs> I kid and uh, awesome. Tom Barrow was standing there and he about flipped. He said, We gotta give the kid credit for knowing who Dick Cheney is. But I went home and took a nap. Man, I <laughs> must look really bad. So, Boo Fest, anyhow, coming right up on the 27th. Okay, our trick or treating hours are on Halloween, October the 31st, from 5 to 7 p.m. And hopefully, we have good weather for all those nights. Goblins and such are out there. They're, they're being safe. Then the Holiday Stroll uh, Rochester Downtown Partnership event is set for December the 1st, 6 to 8 p.m. downtown. Okay, got, uh, got lots, of, uh, lots of things coming up. Okay, uh, let's slip on down to our public hearing. Additional appropriations for Lowett and RDC. Uh, Entertain a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Moved by Wilson, seconded by Ruth. Those in favor? Okay, we're now in the public hearing for uh, those two uh, issues. Shada, you want to take the floor on that? Yes, just a minute. Uh, this was, we brought this up before uh, Chief Butler. We'll start with him since he's present. These are for the air packs that we were planning on purchasing was in the budget for next year and he was able to actually save us about seventy thousand dollars by taking advantage of a sale that they had correct the MSA this year. had a buy one tank get the second tank uh, free and then everything else was at a significant discount and then first year that was the quote that was given for, for bid that they beat by 70 and he was afraid actually the first year prices are going to go up, so we probably actually save more than that. Good job. The air packs, uh, probably you wouldn't know this, but the air packs have an expiration date. So <clears throat> when that hits, it's a good idea to yeah. do something. Yeah. And Tom did a nice job of working, working that out. Thank you much, Tom. Thank you. So, and I'm sorry, I'm just going to say 15 years, right? Is that how long those packs? This, the, 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 yeah, the, the tanks are good for 15, so we, we can hydro them twice throughout the process every five years. Um, the other packs were actually start, we're starting to have some electronic <coughs> problems, and we actually had three out of service that is just the, the cost of repair. Um, this manufacturer warranties most of the electronics through the whole 15, or I, I, I'm sorry, I take that back, through the lifetime of ownership of the pack. So have an issue with something um, they'll take care of it we're using rechargeable batteries for this system and they are guaranteed for warranty for 15 years so we shouldn't have an issue where before we were buying hundreds of uh, double A's 
twice a year to, to put it in the packs, and that were some some of the corrosion problem was happening is depending on the and I used the specific brand that they but then they changed it because the Duracells were having issues and causing corrosion inside the, and that wasn't covered at warranty. I could have went after Duracell, but that wasn't going to work. So we lost a few packs that way. We were able to fix a few, but that that was one of the, the biggest glitches with those. So so now we're rechargeable and don't have to worry about that process. So we're needing to move some money. We've got the money. But, uh, yeah, it was sitting there. So. Well, what it is is our current Bob, this will be your first time going through an additional appropriation. Uh, with government funds, we set a budget, and with that budget, if we have to expend above and beyond the, what the budget is set for, and we, are, we don't have any other line items that will cover that expense that we can transfer down, then we have to do an additional appropriation. We have to have cash balance available, as well as the um, invoices applicable. It takes council action in order to do it, and then it has to be submitted to the state for final approval especially with tax supported funds these two funds are actually not what they don't they don't consider tax supported they consider them uh, home rule funds so for the public safety fund low well, public safety uh, the 325,000 in addition is both a combination of andy's request uh, he had a sale he ended up with kind of a similar thing as tom board of works approved him to move forward with the purchase to replace which I, we'll let him go through here in just a second. Yeah, give him that. And uh, then the redevelopment <coughs> commission. This is to cover uh, some additional expense with Apache Drive on professional services. So it's the same process. In order for us to be able to pay those invoices, we've got to increase our appropriation balance in the budget. So that way it doesn't take it to the red. So it was not originally budgeted. Andy, you want to? Talk about your uh, yeah, we ended up getting new tasers, <clears throat> and quite honestly, Shadow was doing the additional appropriation for Tom, so I asked her, "Can you throw one in for me too?" <laughs> um, just as simple as, as two than one. And that's but that's not it, unusual. We see the fire department uh, carrying the police department a lot. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Um, out the Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> they know where to plow for us when they need to. <laughs> um, yeah, the tasers we currently have, we've had some of those 15 years. Uh, they're called the X26s. They're not supported by taser anymore. They've been phasing those out for some time. <clears throat> um, I thought this was a good opportunity just to get all brand new tasers. Uh, we got the new, newest version, it's called the Taser 10. Um, it's the latest and greatest. And we went ahead and purchased all of them for all of our officers, brand new ones. Instead of trying to get three this year and three next year, we just get the bullet, got all of them. And it's a five-year program where any batteries, um, issues, probes, they will replace for five years. Um, every officer has to deploy two probes every year for recertification, they'll send us those. We just send them the paperwork to tell them how many, how many we need and they send them to us. Um, pretty good program, I think, but they, they were salty. They were uh, 54,000 and change for the 13 tasers and the, the program, but we got 260 probes also. So yeah, we went ahead and, and did that. We're actually having training on those tomorrow to get all of our officers certified to roll those out to the new, to the officers. Now, do you still uh, tase one of the officers, like a volunteer? Yeah, if they want to, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. We okay. volunteered you. No, no, no. <laughs> I thought the board of work said Figlio. You know, he's oh, always no, no, interested no. in that. I think they that step up for that. But no, you. I thought that you had an officer one, once in a while you would tase, so they understood what the taser was all about. When new officers get certified, they have to go through the. Like yeah, they have to go through the, we don't actually shoot them with the probes, but, but we... They know what the Energizer yeah, part's all we about. We hook, hook them up to it and they take the five second ride <laughs> just so they know what it's like and what it's all about. Yeah. And how they can understand if they get tased with their own weapon, how they can be incapacitated. 
Yeah. That's why they have that long extension cord that's plugged in, and on the end there's just two wires. Now you hold, you hold those, and then they plug it in, and you get the five seconds. There you go. And it, 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 now you're seeing why it's difficult getting a police officer. Right like from day one? Oh, yeah. 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 That's good stuff, Andy. Are you uh, saving uh, your, your discussion about the guns, the service guns for your presentation? I thought, I don't know, I thought we'd already talked about that. Did you already that. talk about that? No. Well, about bringing our firearms. We, I think we talked about that last, last year. Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's just been an opportunity to upgrade these folks and get them where they need to be. Okay. So. Unless there's uh, any public questions. Okay. Or council has any further questions on. Any comment from the public? Beth, you need the public. I, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very interested. The media. I'm very impressed. Anything the from the media? Any? Okay. All right. I would uh, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. This one. Seconded by Wilson. Those in favor? Okay. So closed. Okay. Uh, now then, uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, uh, accept uh, the uh, appropriation as stated. It's in a resolution, so you'll want to present okay. that in a proper. That would be resolution uh, uh, 05 2023. The, 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 the title. Yes. Yeah, let's yeah. Don't, don't it's a resolution. So. Yeah. Okay, Ruth made the motion. Second. Second. Who's mm -hmm. in favor? Chad, you want to read it? Resolution 05 2023 okay. additional appropriation. Accept resolution 5 2023. So, so motion. Okay, John made the motion. Wilson seconded those in favor. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that was 3 30. Uh, the total, I apologize. The <coughs> additional appropriation for the LOIT fund is 325000 and for the redevelopment fund is 100000 So your total is 425000 for both funds. Okay, moving along, uh, there's, uh, well, there, the new business, uh, just a uh, comment, we did have the uh, presentation of the Ready Grant check last week, the groundbreaking patch and drive project. Those of you who want to see the million dollar check, we have it out in the hallway. You can't stick it in your wallet, it's as big as this desk. And, uh, that uh, that was County and City collaborating out there, and uh, just as soon as we had the official groundbreaking there, the heavy equipment started moving in, and they're working towards that. They will do that for uh, a month, clearing up stuff and such out there. And USI is updating the Redevelopment Commission tomorrow morning on progress, and then uh, the construction folks will shut down in about a month for the winter, and then they'll pick it back up. So that's, that should be one of the more seamless projects. I mean, there's no, no old infrastructure, nothing to deal with. It's a clean sheet, but you know, you see how it goes. But that's the first one we've had where we had not, haven't had to deal with current infrastructure. It's part of it. Well, I mean, it's, it's a field, yeah. And the only, the only yeah. issue that, might be a little cumbersome with water. Okay. <laughs> so I was with, there was included in our packet a uh, letter from HRP Construction. Is that were you going to hit that later on, or is that part of this conversation too? Some of the changes and where all those came from. Or? Oh, that was part of the Board of Works. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. what that was from. That was the approval of their that additional expense. That that's where the additional appropriations. Came. <laughs> No, 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 no. On Apache, that was the down Peace Tree where they missed the sewer, additional hookup for the lines, and some additional removal and of the trees and the fence. That four hundred and seventy thousand. That was the change order from HRP per the design changes that the Board of Works approved. Yeah, that's the only. 
kicked out the state and yeah. uh, developed, like, like started to say, once you start digging in the ground, you might find some things. I'm, not, I'm thinking that they're probably going to come back at some point and need a little bit more for dewatering because of the water issues that we typically see. They do have uh, some uh, monies that are built into that. Hopefully it's enough. <coughs> okay. Anything else, Bob? Sorry, All right. Okay. <laughs> going, uh, going down to old business then. Uh, the Guardian Advocates, uh, remember these folks, they've been to us a couple times now. And, and John, I know, I know you yeah. remember them, right? Oh, boy, yeah, they, uh, they've requested $5,000 every year. I think first year, what, we did it out of the mayor's promotional fund. Yep. And then uh, the next time we asked, how many people are you servicing in Fulton County now? I, I don't know, John, refresh my memory. It doesn't seem like they're picking up a lot of people in Fulton County. I was thinking of when she was here the last time, what was it, three or five? Like they that. went from... One. It went from one. 15, and they've had from beginning to end. Yeah, they. I mean, they started two years ago with one, and yeah. now they're up to 15 that they've served in full. <laughs> as far as that they're working on, that are involved right now, mm -hmm. it was three or five. Current, yes. yes the right total now. was 15. Yeah. As of a period of time. Yeah. That, well, no, that was just last year, just since last year. Last year. Mm -hmm. They, they've added, and she said there was more cases um, that they were working on. And I went back because she's they, since they come in on the tail end of our budgeting, we I went back to double check because at one point we had added them to the budget. We paid out the last two years, and because the, they're at the tail end, I was thinking that we actually the 2023 budget we covered them for 23, but we won't pay it out until 24. So it won't be paid out actually until, but for them, it's actually considered their, for their 24 grant cycle. And then you weren't here at the last meeting and she said the <coughs> grant that they utilize through the court system, that will know, they're looking at that money's being pretty much depleted by 2025. Oh, of course they are. So, <laughs> That's a, so now yeah. she's, she's really looking to try to, find, yeah. you know, to try to find that support. And our portion was 18,000, Fulton County was 18,000 that they, they spend out of the budget for Fulton County's 18,000. And have they gotten anything from the county at that point? I believe they do. I believe they have 5,000 from the county. 5,000 from the county. Okay. So the, if we do the this 5,000, then they've at least got 10,000 of their 18 that they spend here. But I thought we agreed with them that since we've already, we're really, Good and we don't may have to make a decision on any of that for this year since we've already appropriated funds for them for 24. So we don't really make to need to make a decision no, she until just wanted, after until yeah, next year. Right, exactly. She just she wanted to make sure you guys were updated mm -hmm. and Brian didn't want to make any take any action because we had we only had four council members last month. So he wanted to wait and make sure everybody was still okay with it before there was any, but as far as it being, it's in the budget, so we don't really need to take action unless you just want it on record again that yes, you approve moving forward with it. And then she'll send us a letter <coughs> December, January, and then we'll cut the check out in the 24 cycle. In the but we owe them a check right now. Or no, next. we're good right now. Okay. Because she year. doesn't want the money year. until okay. she's ready to actually allocate it towards year. her budget. So she, she doesn't want it sitting there waiting. So she'll wait until it's uh, the beginning of 24. But we really don't have to do anything to that at all. Not really. And I would suggest that. <laughs> Everybody will. Yeah. Okay. Good for any reason that we can move on. That takes a check mark right there. Okay. All right. That takes us down to the uh, ordinances and resolutions. We've already taken care of the first resolution on the list. Uh, 06 2023. That is the budget for 24. Shot at you. have the floor. Sure. That. Uh, as we presented at the public hearing, the tax rate and budget, nothing, I mean, obviously you guys didn't make any changes, so everything is still the same, and our proposed tax levy is going to be 1.1888 for the tax-supported funds, and the 
adopted levy will be four million sixty three thousand six hundred thirty eight and our adopted budget will be nine million seven hundred forty seven hundred remember some of this is due to the grants we have some and our home rule funds are five million six hundred thirty two six hundred and thirty six hundred thirty two thousand six hundred and thirty five dollars we have to appropriate money to spend out of our grant funds so we're anticipating the ready grant will be coming out for Happy drive our, which will also include our arpa fund which will also include we had a grant fund for our sidewalks our ada sidewalk grant so all of those extra dollar amounts for those grants are included in here we're not getting revenue in most of them are a reimbursable grant so we have to pay it out the state will send us money back but we have to appropriate for it. Otherwise, we do John's favorite thing and we do more additional appropriations. It always so. works. It always works. <laughs> so our budget includes the, here's what we think we're gonna spend for these additional grants and the money's coming out for that. So nothing has been has changed from what was presented or what was discussed at the budget session with you guys. Um, it's just in our formal format and I get to check the boxes to say whether you vote yes or no. Uh, now, I will say that uh, the other thing, again, Bob, your first time through this, it is time sensitive. We are, because we normally adopt our budget in September, but this year we, due to circumstances, we pushed everything back. Um, instead of having an August, September public hearing and adoption, we did September and October. So we are under the wire to make sure that we get the state's deadlines. Uh, we do have to have everything submitted November so I have five days to get the budget uploaded to the state and our salary ordinance for a resolution which will also be coming up here uh, that has to be adopted before November 1st so I was very glad to see all the two of you tonight <laughs> yeah, well, it's really hard for us to be in that forum yes uh, otherwise we'd be yes, having we a always are, special yes, meeting we another one of John's favorite things <laughs> yeah, yes you know but right. it's in, in, yeah. in eight years I did I think we've only had to walk out for one time. Uh, that's yes. pretty good. So that's good. Uh, the other thing, too, in eight years, if for you, Bob, you're relatively new. Uh, if you go and, you know, this is not to be snarky or anything, but if you go to some other municipal meetings in other towns or even our county meetings, appropriations are up. Uh, Oh, I want to say she got a regular part of their life at every meeting, moving money here to there, to here to there. We haven't had to do that. As if you, you old timers know, we do it towards the end of the year, get everything's short up. But we haven't had to do that at every meeting, which is good. That's good stuff. Okay. With that being said, do I have a motion for the reading of resolution 06 2023? So moved by title on. Second. Seconded by Fitzwater. Uh, those in favor? Okay. Shada, you want to read it by title only? Sure. Resolution 06 2023. Okay. 2024 budget. Okay. I have a motion to approve uh, 06 2023. Ruth? Second. Fitzwater, second. Resolution 07-2023 salary uh, ordinance. Uh, again, same thing. This is standard, uh, same as every year, our traditional format. We've already discussed the employee raises. Uh, budget department heads have already presented to you, so everything is in here. The only caveat that I will say is neither Ted nor I took a pay raise for next year. So the salaries will be the same for the mayor and the public treasurer's offices. Um, everybody else did, uh, we recommended a 50 cent across the board for full time, 25 cents for part time. All the rest of the benefits stayed the same. We didn't make any changes there. So uh, the insurance, that is one that, you know, come next year because we do midterm renewals on our medical insurance. That is something that may come up next year is that may need to be changed depending on where rate negotiations come in and what our renewal rates come in at. Uh, be 
beyond that, I, there isn't anything special. The <clears throat> department heads, public safety did request for certifications. They asked for some changes, which I believe, again, was discussed in our budget hearing. And we got any of the probationary salary raise, right? Correct, okay. yes. Okay. Okay. Double check. Yep, and uh, <clears throat> 52.5. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. And the volunteer overnight, <clears throat> 50. Correct, yes. We got that in. Up to 50 and your run time your run amount still at 17. 17. And as you all know relative to the health insurance situation we negotiate really hard for that every year we are seeing a bump but uh, everybody else is talking double digits we've never had a double digit bump ours is, ours was uh, eight percent this year over the eight years we've averaged uh, about three percent so we hit that really hard because it's pretty important. We not only have uh, limited monies to work with, but we have a very good package. You know, uh, our people pay a dollar a year for that package. <clears throat> it's a very good package. Okay, uh, do I have a motion to uh, have a reading of resolution 07-2023? So moved. And second? By title only. Seconded by group. Those in favor? Okay. Shot up by title only. Resolution 07 2023. A resolution fixing the salaries for the employees of the City of Rochester, Indiana for the year 2024 to the Common Council of the City of Rochester, Indiana. Uh, do I have a motion to accept uh, 07 2023? So moved. Wilson, make a motion. Second. Second by Fitzwater. Those in favor? Heads. Um, thank you, uh, Chief Butler and Chief Shots, for being here this evening. Everybody else was tied up with something. Let's so shake this up. Chief Shots, you want to go first? Oh, I'm not ready. Since I can, off. You're not ready? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, for the month of September, I will get you copies. Of, I apologize, I got here late. Um, for the month of September, we have 30 accidents. Three of those were personal injury. Uh, we issued 43 warnings, there were 40 total offenses. 30 case reports, 510 calls for service, 25 lockouts, excuse me, nine towed vehicles and 19 people incarcerated. <clears throat> and then I have the crimes. Uh, domestic battery took the top with five people arrested in September for that. Um, other than that, last Thursday, the Board of Works held interviews with applicants for our police officer position that we have open. Uh, they made a conditional offer to Jonathan Easter. Jonathan's from Cass County, uh, currently fixing up his grandparents' old house in 12 Mile. Um, he's got a criminal law, or criminal justice degree. So um, we're looking forward to getting him started and that'll put us back up to full staff. And, uh, it was a good interview. He did what? He started to loosen up a little bit. Yeah. Would you like to have mentioned to the, how many uh, brotherhoods you had for the month? Um, uh, possession of methamphetamine, excuse me, possession of methamphetamine was just once, one for the month of September. We did have four people charged with resisting law enforcement, though, so I'm not sure what was up with that. Okay. Any questions for the chief? And uh, Tom? All right, good evening. A month of September for the fire department. Uh, structure fires two in Rochester Township, one in the Newcastle Township. Mutual aids one in the Henry Township, one in the Kiwana, one in the Abenabi. Field fires one in Richland Township. Auto fire alarms two in the city, two in Rochester Township. Accidents five in the city, two in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Medical assist 13 in the city, seven in Rochester Township, two Newcastle Township, one in Richland Township. Lift assist one in Richland Township. Gas leak, one in the city. CO checks, one in the city. Canceled calls, one in the city. So should add up with my new math. There's 46 runs, and we conducted one night of training. Um, update on the, on the appropriations. Air packs are at the station, been inventory. Training's been conducted, and they are in service. Super good. <clears throat> Thomas, on the, uh, on the uh, committee, ambulance service situation as well and you have another meeting any more meetings uh we we can
conducted two days of interviews with three potential companies. Um, we're now vetting them with their references, and then uh, I think the sixth we go back and make a recommendation to the commissioners, and then they'll take that to the council and figure out funding. <coughs> Okay, any questions from the chief? Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, down to the reports. Okay, right down to Ruth the Area Planning Commission. We're not going to have a meeting until something comes up. So, <laughs> so we're going to have a meeting until something comes up. So, I'm going to have a meeting until something comes up. I'm going to suggest the new administration put all those things in a hat. Draw them out. Boy, she did well. Okay. Park Board. Robert? Hey, they met back on October 22nd. They uh, approved, a, or no, back on the uh, 12th, I believe. They approved an event for October 22nd in the city park. I'm not sure how that came out, but that was a, a Joe Nestor some church groups. Joe Nestor was the performer and there were some church groups. Aaron Owens worked with that. I don't know if anybody saw that over the past, I think that was over this past week. Did we see that in the park? No. Okay. Uh, Lee from the golf course also reported that the carts should arrive in seven to ten days. So I don't know if they actually did or not. We got part of them. Good. Just part? Yeah, I think there's ten that they received. Yes. He was supposed to have gotten the rest of them yesterday and did not see him today to ask if they arrived yet or not. I have the invoice with all of their serial numbers. I so, see him on the course, the green through here. I yeah. did see some. So I think, but that was the expected, was yesterday and they were to be delivered, the rest of them. So I know he was looking forward to that and had some, it sounded like some anxious, anxious moments with the sales rep a little bit there too. I'm glad to hear he got those, so it'll be something out, out of his hair anyway. And then uh, he's playing the Greenskeepers uh, Revenge Tournament, which is coming right up on October 29th. That's uh, for the people that helped him take care of the greens and signed up to do that. Uh, he's is that where he ties Anthony to a post and they just beat the hell out of him? <laughs> huh? I, I, I'm not sure. You haven't played, <laughs> you haven't played in that one. Have you? No, okay. no, no. Um, Marking down uh, the clothing inventory in the in the pro shop there, uh, starting this fall, I got permission to do that. Uh, it feels like the outings are getting rebooked uh, next year. It feels like he's got 85 percent of them rebooked that did this year, and uh, he also was very positive about the children's clinic that he uh, put on. He had average 31 participants a day. Did uh, you see any of those pictures? They were. They were pretty cute. Yeah, he did a good job with that. And the way he reported that the work around the dam, that area is pretty well done. And he purchased a truck from the Parks Department from Kiwana for $7,200. He's still fighting with the pool liner. He has found some holes in the pool liner, but he didn't think that's enough for the amount of water that they've been losing, so he's still kind of looking. And they're putting up some no parking signs at the golf courts. And I cheated because I used Wes's notes instead of mine because I can read this here. Good job, Wes. <laughs> Any questions for Wes? <laughs> <laughs> but I was there. <laughs> okay, uh, solid waste animal adoption. No. Those God. groups only meet every two months. <clears throat> and we didn't meet this month, so. Okay. Tree board uh, and the EMS, Brian? Uh, the tree board did not meet, but they, we, after the end of last month, they had the uh, movie at the uh, theater, Lorax. And the email I came <coughs> out with is positive, but I don't have numbers. Yeah. So we did not meet in uh, October. That fulfills the requirement for the Arbor Day. Arbor Day, correct. Uh, and Tree City. But even if, even if nobody so, showed up, we still have requirements. Correct. I don't know numbers of who's how many showed up, percentage, families, whatever. Uh, they are still looking at reviewing the incoming uh, requests for uh, removals and prunings 
and the, uh, the contracts and the, the key on top of all that even though not needed so we can look at everything they've done a really good job oh i think so yeah yes i mean you know you've been a lot of those meetings sure. over the years and they've been pretty mundane <laughs> you think it'd be pretty mundane <laughs> it's a um, thankless job for it is it is and uh, they, they've all done a great job yeah, i agree how about ems um, not been to any meetings. Chief Butler essentially gave a, a good report as to what's happening there. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for Councilman Fitzwater? Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Water Board, John? Yes, Water Board met this month, as we always do. And one thing I thought was uh, interesting that I'd never considered before, uh, we're putting new, uh, we're putting mixers in all the water towers. Right. Uh, a mixer in the water tower. Well, in Logansport, I guess last year they had a water tower froze up uh, during the winter time. And then that's, that's, that's causes problem. major problems, major financial fixes. Uh, it does two things. Of course, it will keep that problem from happening. Uh, it will also cut down uh, on chemical usage, supposedly, because it will keep the chemicals that are in the tank moving around and just hopefully. It will make for a better water supply, and the chemicals they say they don't come down and possibly use the chemicals, so they won't be safe stated somewhere. Now it does come with the cost of uh, seventy-five thousand uh, dollars, but it's very, very well worth it. And then, uh, then for uh, Peerless, is going to hook up the SCADA system uh, for uh, twenty-four hundred dollars. That's all for all three towers. And so it brings us to 77,400. And of course that was passed and it'll be a good thing. It's a good safety measure. And in the long run with terribly cold weathers and for just saving on chemicals, I think the city may be steps ahead on it. I think the water board made a very good move there. Uh, they've also done to uh, raise the tap fees. And this was a thing that we've been behind on for so far on water tap fees. And we're raising it as of the first of the year to five thousand dollars we've just been behind on it and terribly behind on the fees and so we we're going to move up just a little bit and then it was mentioned that maybe just to move it up and get it maybe get ahead of the game a little bit so that you're not staying in the in the back so long which we have been and we've been actually been losing money so this gives us a chance to at least stay ahead of the game for a while and uh it was approved, and I think that's going to be a good thing for the city, and it will it'll generate the money that needs to be generated for these costs. Right? We've been having tap fees and losing money, and that's, you don't run, a, as I've always said so many times, you run a city like a business, and you you don't give things away by God. I'm sorry, you just can't lose money and keep it going, and we've been very fortunate. Um, other than that, uh, we're not going to uh, sell bulk water anymore. And it's just that Derek brought the request up that is really for the charges that are made on bulk water. That it's just, it's just time consuming. It's not beneficial to the water department. So bulk water is, is done. It's going to be done. And that will, I didn't put a date on that, but I'm, a, I'm assuming that will be the first of the year also. And uh, is that usually for pools, John? Uh, yes pools and uh, just in general uh, bulk water tanks essentially what it yeah. is is there's a spigot storage the street barn and it's it's not really designed well and it's not safe well, so bulk water tankers huh? that's gone that's and it's gone. Yeah, yeah so they we've just reduced that now what they do will still continue to do is the, the metered sales so for instance yeah. the festivals downtown they'll come and get, uh, we have a multi-meter device that hooks onto the fire hydrants and it will meter, you know, three or four vendors coming off of that. So that, that we will still offer because we can track the sales on that, we can track the meter numbers to be able to build that back out. But the bulk water, water was, was just, just a, it it was was a time-consuming loss, mm -hmm. time-consuming loss. Other than that, everything's running wonderful. Congratulations to Derek on that again. And that'd be all. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks, John. Yeah, the uh, 
the circulation of the water towers. That's something that they build a water tower. They have it over here as an impossible <coughs> situation. Everybody always looks at it as an ant. That's an added expense we can do without. Until you really get into it, some benefits of something like that. Probably be about a three year payback on the chemical situation, mm -hmm. but there will be a return on that investment. Last time uh, so, it's just something I would have I would have never thought of. No, no, I mean, you just think, okay, the water's the water. Well, You're it looking has, at those towers for all your whole life. Right, yeah. And you never thought about something to yeah. take the water in. Something settling, you yeah. know. That makes sense. It takes an event for everybody to go. <clears throat> yeah. 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 <laughs> My work. We're glad it's not us. Okay, Lawyer Perkins, it's good to see you tonight. How was your vacation? Uh, wonderful. It was great. Uh, any legal issues we need to talk about? I don't think we have anything that needs to come before council today. No. Okay. <coughs> any ADA concerns? Uh, not that I, I just I briefly touched on the sidewalk grant that we have. The, yeah. We did do the letting on that and we got that back. Did come in a little bit over our engineer's estimate. So the project construction cost is at eight. I did not bring the paper with me. I want. I believe it came in at eight eight hundred sixty thousand. Yeah, that's, that's about right. And actually, uh, it's a little higher because the initial concrete bidders that were. I think there were six of them. The one who came in the lowest didn't meet all the requirements. Yeah. So, uh, the so state that go the next lowest one. Mm -hmm. And then, so those did come out. And again, this is a state; uh, it's federally backed. So there's we have to jump through the state's hoops on this particular project. But that construction should start come spring as soon as the weather breaks. And the areas of concentration are going to be over towards. Riddle Elementary and Columbia Elementary. This ties into, for those of you that were here back when we started the Safe Routes to Schools program, uh, that was a coordinated effort with the county, the area plan office, us, to try to identify areas throughout the city that sidewalks and pedestrian traffic needed to be improved. Uh, when this is, <laughs> This started in 2019, and we knew that it was going to be a fiscal year, construction year of 2024. This is one of those transportation grants that is a four or five year stretch. But they, they should have it actually completed by, I believe the, I wish Randy was here. He's actually the project manager for it. But I believe the contract says they're supposed to be completed by July 31st. July. Yes. Yeah. So it won't be a long uh, project for them. We've already removed the trees, so obstacles that were in their way with, this, with these areas have already been removed. So it should just be a matter of coming in, tearing it up. We are saving the bricks because there's going to be some areas that were the original brick sidewalks. I did ask that was put in the contract. I did ask for those to be saved. And the Redevelopment Commission was actually excited about that because they think they've got some projects coming up that they might be able to reutilize those bricks for um, some downtown revitalization. <coughs> so that was kind of a good thing that we, we did that. But as the as far as the, being the ADA coordinator, uh, the only other ADA issues we have are our standard 50-50 sidewalk. We had three of them. We're still waiting on return quote on a couple areas that we needed to have requoted because in order to meet the ADA specifications we have to take the sidewalk we have to have a fully crossable street meaning that the crosswalk on the north side of the street has to match the crosswalk on the south side of the street to make it safe so we had to go back and ask the contractors to add some additional uh, information to the you also have to do all four corners when you do one no, it, they started out with that when we first started that's down the transition plan. Yeah, 2012. <laughs> but they backed off on that and said that as long as the pedestrian can continue travel, and if you can cross the street and continue travel, you don't have to have two areas to cross it, just one. So that helps it. Unfortunately, one of the corners is one of those corners where the slope is going to be it's it's extremely high it's got a hill 
So it's going to have to cut back, and then you're going to have to put in your barrier along the, the residence yeah, to protect the erosion. So that's why we opted to go the, the single for right now, and then we'll come back and keep that other one on the list. Good. Okay. Will we need to advise the schools about any of the, you talk about the, that work is going to be near the schools. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are, are not so much walking, but they're, everybody's driving. Yes, once they actually, once they roll it out, the construction firm will give us kind of their timeline and areas where they're going to be concentrating. And once we have that, then we will communicate that absolutely with the schools because it can impact, especially buses. Now, <clears throat> Columbia probably more than Riddle because there's more concentrated area over there and there's more vehicle traffic. Riddle tends to have a few more pedestrian. They have more kids walking at Riddle than they do at Columbia. But yeah, we will absolutely communicate that once we know. Okay. Any other ADA issues we don't know? I have had none brought to me. Yeah. Uh, anything from the council? I would entertain so a motion to adjourn. Those in favor? Wow. Thank you very much. Those opposing flash. <laughs>